What's it YouTube, Dale here for Zephyr Games, bringing you, as requested by quite a lot of you, an update to the Element Saber deck profile now that the ban list has hit. Now, unfortunately, Element Sabers were one of the casualties, I suppose, of this ban list, losing out to Ancient Fairy Dragon, which actually helped the consistency of this deck quite a lot, especially if you saw the combo video or the kind of test time video that I did. There was a lot of... Um, a lot of reliance on the Ancient Fairy Dragon because it helps you turbo through your field spell. Um, so in this version, I've kind of gone for more of a draw ability or kind of draw engines uh, to help get us consistent and increase our hand limit or, or deck fin a little bit more of what we need to. There are a couple of cards that I've changed around, a couple of cards that I would, you know, that could possibly go back in. Uh, and I'll tell you those as we go through. So without further ado, let's get started. So I really, really enjoy this day. It's a lot of fun and, and it actually did well at one of the regionals. I believe it was, it got like top cut or won it, something like that. Uh, so it's very, very cool. We start off with triple um, Element Saber, Lapulia Mana. This is obviously the big boss card of the deck. This sends two from your deck to the graveyard or two from your hand, unless you've got the field spell in play. Uh, and then whatever attributes, it gets different effects. Um, your Element Sabers can't be destroyed by battle or can't be targeted or can't be destroyed by card effects. So he's very, very important. We've got triple Malehu, Book of Moon during your player's turn, triple uh, Makani your searcher of the deck, triple Lapulia, this is your spell and trap negator, triple Ania, uh, Ania, this should have been a super, like this is such a good card, it's your own personal monster reborn, really really powerful, uh, two Mallow, this is your extra foolish bearer of the deck, uh, and then one Nalu, just to help with additional attributes in the graveyard, then for the big boss cards, we've got the one Grand Soil now that he is back. Um, obviously the errata is that it's only it's a hard once per turn, which is absolutely fine because you get one back to extend your board a little bit further. And again, they're all protected under Lapolia Manor. The one Elemental Lord, this can actually come out. This is just best of going second because it just regekis the board. But then your other alternative now that Grand Soil is back... Um, is, would go to Grand Soul because then you get the Monster Reborn and extend your board a little bit further. Obviously Moon and Glacier because it's incredibly powerful going first. Um, so if you're going first, you aim for Moon and Glacier or Grand Soul. If you're going second, you aim, aim for uh, Lightning or Grand Soul. The BLS because he's incredibly powerful and he's very, very easily made in this deck. Very, very easy uh, and can actually win you games. So I did take out um, Dad. I did take out Dark Armor Dragon. You can put him back in if you want. I think if I was going to take out the Thunder, I would put him back in because he's still very, very powerful. But I don't want too many high-level cards in my deck because you can then start to brick. So this has kind of worked out as a nice little balance for me um, between the lot, especially with the fact we haven't got the uh, ability of Ancient Fairy Dragon anymore. Speaking of which, you play Triple Palace of the Element Lords. This is the heart and soul of the deck. And Triple Terraforming because it is that important. Now, I had considered using Metaverse. And the reason I would consider using Metaverse is because you would go... Um, if you had, like, for example, two Lapulia Manors on board or you had Lapulia Manor and a Search or something like that, you had the combos on board. Um, if you use it the first time, your opponent's like, ah, yeah, cool, he's done it. I've not got anything to worry about. And then you flip... Um, Metaverse, giving yourself a fresh field spell, it then allows you to send another one from your deck to the graveyard, um, allowing you to use those abilities. The other card that I've looked into is Torrential Tribute, but by putting Torrential Tribute in this deck, you do need to make sure that your Lapulia Manor is on board and that all your cards are protected um, by destruction of card effects, which 9 times out of 10 is what you do. Um, but you've got to be more careful when you're doing it, so it's a lot more difficult to pull off. I've kept the free scapegoat. I'm still not 100% set on this card. It's very, very good. And when we get to the edge, I'll show you what I've put in to help make this a bit more consistent. Um, but I don't think it aids itself to a go if you have to go second. It, it then becomes kind of a dead card. Um, because 9 times out of 10, your board is going to be Lapulia Manor and then maybe Lapulia for a negate. So sometimes you don't always have the space to activate and resolve scapegoat, which is why it's considered to be dropped. One Roder. All warriors in your deck, so you want that to be searching them out. The one upstart for a bit more consistency. The one pot of desires, you play loads of freeze off, but then you're also putting them into the graveyard. So ideally, if you get this after you've gone through all your field spells and, your, uh, and not touch your terraformings, and then you've put enough materials in your graveyard, um, then you know that's kind of what you want. It would be nice if there was a uh, like an element saber monster that put back to the deck. That would be very, very helpful. But, you know, we go with what we got. And then finally, the one monster bomb because bringing back your big beaters is insanely powerful. 
Uh, and then for the traps, we've got two infinite impermanence and then the one element, elemental training. Elemental training is really good, but I found it way too cloggy above one. Um, and then the impermanence, these can actually be anything you want. These could be other hand traps. Now, the biggest issue I've got with the hand traps right now is that attributes don't match or actually help out with the big boss monsters you're going for. Ghost Ogre, yes, contributes to going second with the Thunder, um, with the Thunder King. Kind of play the Thunder Elemental Lord. So that is an option for yourself if you wish to. And then, of course, you've got Effect Veilers as well. So it depends on what type of budget you're on. Um, but that is one route that you can go. Now on to the extra deck. So for our Link 4s, we've got the one Firewall Dragon. This can be easily made off of your Scapegoat. You've got the one Borrowload and your one Saruja. Those are obviously your main targets for that. We've then got the Nightmare Engine of Unicorn, Goblin, Phoenix, and Cerberus. Uh, these are quite ideal. More so Cerberus and Phoenix than um, the other two. But the additional normal summon from Goblin can also be very, very helpful. If, if you're going off of the Scapegoat play as well, you can Scapegoat into... Uh, your goblin when you go one link spider another link spider and then use a token go into your goblin that then gives you uh, two normal summons for that turn so you can extend your board a little bit further and you still have one token left over as well uh, yeah you still have one token left over as well uh, we've then obviously got the Ib and Ningrusu combo for the additional draw. Not ideal, but again, coming off of Scapegoat, this is another alternative. Plus, it gets you, it lets you send your dead cards. So if you've ever got a dead Scapegoat or a dead Terraforming, this allows you to send it and then clear one of your opponent's troublesome cards. Uh, for the Link Freeze, we've got the Decode and the Trispania. Trispania for Altergeist and Dracos, because they're still around, believe it or not. Maybe not as powerful as much were, but still around. Uh, you've then got the one Underclock, the one Akatic, um, Proxy Dragon and then double Link Spider. Link Spider can be bumped up to three if you want to to make your scapegoats a little bit more consistent. Um, so could Proxy Dragon, that could go up to two as well. A Katic is in there because um, they're all the same type. The majority of all your cards are Warriors, uh, except for obviously your extra deck cards. Uh, and then being able to bounce a card, or if you side in your Kaijus, to Kaiju, bounce a Kaiju, and then Kaiju again is always going to be very, very helpful. Uh, and it can help extend your plays that bit further. So that is it for the deck profile. The consistency has taken a hit. I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat it. Unfortunately, it, that is one of the collaterals of the ban list. But it doesn't mean the deck is any less fun. If anything, it means it's a little bit cheaper and easier for you guys to pick up. Especially when the hype was when they were doing, when they did well at the event. It hyped up a little bit, not a much. But it did hype up a little bit. Uh, and now that hype is probably going to fall flat down. So definitely pick these up while they're cheap because if they do ever make a comeback or they do get any other cards that allow them to be even more powerful than they are right now, they'll definitely be a deck that people are going to be hunting for. But for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And as always, guys, happy dueling.